you all for being here, uh, you know, your export, uh, expert witness and testimony. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have this, this discussion on flood mapping, uh, which happens to be of great importance to my district in southeast Texas. I represent the 36th district from Houston over to Louisiana. Southeast corner of Texas has uh, been uh, hit uh, many times over the last few years. Uh, the accuracy and consistency of flood mapping is critical in my district, carrying tremendous impacts on communities and homeowners. It is important to realize that these maps cannot be done on a one-size-fits-all approach and that the data that they are based on is critical to having accurate maps. I represent a community down in Hardin County, for example, Hardin County, Texas, which just went through an arduous process of redoing their flood maps with FEMA. Long story short, the new flood maps were almost drawn with data from 1975 instead of using the more recent data from 2010. This mistake was fixed by the community, but had it not been caught by the local water control improvement district, uh, that it could have had a very significant uh, detrimental impact on the community. So, uh, Mr. Grimm, I have other counties that are using flood maps that are based on data from 20 to 30 years ago. And while different counties have maps like Hardin County, using up-to-date data based on aerial surveys and extensive studies, what is the determination for who is getting updated maps? Please, sir. Sure, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> So um, FEMA works with, th this is a shared responsibility, number one. This is a responsibility that working with the local government, working with the state government and the federal government and all the partners uh, to, to work through the process of the mapping. Um, we start the mapping process with what's called this discovery meeting, where we get together at the local level and bring everybody to the table to talk about what needs to be studied, what areas um, are at risk, and what areas we need to extend the mapping to. It's a conversation that takes some time. Um, we then go into the data collection phase uh, of that process, and eventually we get through uh, the data collection and producing the flood map. It then goes through a process of um, uh, uh, public review, uh, and and uh, that is, it, when that's, you say public review, are you talking about that individual county or city or metropolitan yeah, area? Yeah, and the reason I'm asking yeah, this is yes, because sir. Hardin County, for example, they're, they're scared to death. These, these new flood maps, they want to have input uh, from the county and they want to have transparency. So go ahead, resume. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sir. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. I mean, the, FEMA wants community and uh, county uh, input and review to be partners in this process. It is, we believe, is a shared responsibility, and we cannot do it without that conversation to happen. And, uh, you know, I will commit to you that uh, uh, I am glad to reach out to our regional office and ensure that is happening. Um, I am a terrific that. Region 6 office. Um, I am confident that they, they do that. And, uh, uh, I'd be glad to, to loop back with our regional folks to, uh, to extend that. That would be wonderful. And so I'm going to go on to you, Mr. Osler. Uh, let's talk about the Atlas 14 approach. What is the methodology of this approach? And is there, are, are, are there any arbitrary standards to this approach? Thank you, sir. So Atlas 14 for the room is a, a product produced by NOAA that helps understand the uh, statistical frequency of rainfall in different parts of the nation. Uh, one thing that's important to know, there is no steady uh, authorized stream of funding for Atlas 14. It is not a, a funded, supported product by NOAA, despite its critical uh, contribution to this discussion across the nation. And so what you asked about methods, that changes. Uh, there is a, a pool funding mechanism to fund Atlas 14 where uh, local municipalities or states essentially pass the hat to create the funding to trigger NOAA's uptake of an update to Atlas 14, typically at the state level. And so the, the approach then is state of the science, state of the measurements at whenever that update has been made. But if you look across the nation, it's a patchwork coverage now in the uh, degree to which those data are up to date or not. Okay, thank you. I have a few seconds left. Mr. Banfort, uh, one of the slides you showed earlier zoomed in on a specific, uh, a specific area outside of Houston that I recognize as Burnett Bay, which is in my district. Firstly, I'd like to know if this site was chosen for a reason other than its proximity to Johnson Space Center, 
And secondly, other than knowing where we might lose land mass, where businesses or houses uh, have been developed, what is the value of knowing where land subsidence is occurring? Obviously, comparing images taken years ago to present images shows a change, but does this data help predict where subsidence might take place elsewhere uh, in the country? You know, first of all, that image is um, selected because that is a significant area of subsidence. It's just the amount of subsidence that's occurring there. Um, we have very little data nationwide. As we um, monitoring subsidence nationwide. It's just areas we've known where it's occurred and you know, watched it. Um, I don't think that that gives us a forecasting tool for where it will happen in other places. Now, one of the major problems is subsidence is it's um, gradual over a larger area, which takes down the survey control that's used to typically monitor uh, elevation data and takes down the whole area, so you need a broader, more accurate map over the area. All right, thank you. I have other questions, but I'm out of time, so thank you, Mr. Chairman. Recognize Mr. Tonko for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all of the... Uh, my colleagues that who have, have 